Chapter 7 A Priest Forever Hebrews 7 verses 1 to 2 For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first, being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is, king of peace, the slaughter of the kings, Melchizedek was not a Jew, all Jews descended from Abraham, he was mentioned as being both a king, and a priest, this would later forbidden in Israel for anyone but the Messiah, remember what happened when Saul acted as a priest one day, because Samuel was late in arriving, he lost his throne, and that of his descendants, 1 Samuel 15 verses 14 to 23, Melchizedek was not just some pagan king, because the scriptures say that he was a priest of the Most High God, he was priest of Abraham's God, so, prior to this, there was at least a handful of people on the earth worshipping the one true God, Genesis 14 verse 17, Abraham gave a tenth part of all, all that he captured in battle, this was 430 years before the law was given to Moses, this was before there ever was a nation of Israel, this offering was given to Melchizedek in time past, Ephesians 2 verse 2, under God's dealings with Abraham and his descendants, it is not a requirement on the body of Christ today. That program, which was still way in the future, had been kept hidden God from before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 3 verse 9, King of Righteousness, he is called this before he is called the King of Salem, because where he ruled as a king was not as important as how he ruled. He ruled in accordance with the righteousness of God, which is more than any other king could say. King of Salem, Salem is the word shalom in Hebrew, and it means peace. Hebrews 7 verse 3, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, Abedeth a priest continually, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, this could just mean that the Bible does not record Melchizedek's parents' names, time of birth, or the time of his death, or it could mean he is a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ, made like unto the Son of God, Jesus had a father, God, and he had an earthly mother, Mary, which are both recorded for us in scripture. We know when he was born, and when he died, but this scripture says that was made like unto the Son of God, not the other way around that Jesus was made like unto Melchizedek. This could speak about his priestly office, which he held when Abraham met him. And then he vanishes from the pages of scripture, with the exception of the statement made about him concerning Christ mentioned in the previous chapter. It very possibly means that he was made a priest like Christ would be, which was not of the lineage of Levi. Since Christ was eternal and he offered eternal life, while the Levitical priesthood only gave someone the remission of sins for another year, Jesus' priesthood was a far better priesthood. It makes sense then that Abraham would give a tithe to him. Why would he give a tithe to anyone else? What a coincidence that Melchizedek just so happened to be the king and priest in the city of Salem, soon to be called Jerusalem. Abedeth a priest continually, the Levitical priesthood had a 20-year time limit on it imposed by the law. Numbers 4, colon 3, Hebrews 7 verses 4 to 5, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Consider how great this man was, Melchizedek's priesthood was greater than that of Aaron's, because Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. Did Abraham before or after this victory ever give a tenth of his income to Melchizedek, or to anyone else? No, just this one time. A tenth of the spoils, Abraham gave a tithe one time, 430 years before the law came into being. This does not mean that God had instituted tithing since this time or since the dawn of creation. It was a one-time occurrence. Abraham didn't tithe off all he possessed just what he had gotten that day in battle. We do not have priests today in the body of Christ, because we are not under the law. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15, Hebrews 7 verses 6 to 7, But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. The less is blessed of the better. This principle was seen often in the Bible when a father would bless his son, not the other way around or when a king would bless his subject. Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and Abraham thanked God by giving him a tenth of the spoils, because God had first blessed him with the victory. This offering enabled the king of Salem to do what he needed to do with what he received from Abraham. Hebrews 7 verses 8 to 10, And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, 
paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father, when Melchizedek met him. Here men that die receive tithes. The writer was referring to people still under the law paying tithes to priests still under the same program. Paid tithes in Abraham, Levi descended from Abraham so by Abraham giving a tithe to Melchizedek, it was as if his children did as well through him doing it. Hebrews 7 verse 11 If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, and not be called after the order of Aaron? Another priest, this is speaking of Jesus Christ as Israel's high priest. Since the law was not perfect it could never wash away a man's sins under the Aaronic priesthood, another type of priest was needed that was eternal to be Israel's high priest. The Order of Melchizedek, Psalm 110 verse 4, The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5 verses 6 and 10, as he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 6 verse 20, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7 verses 17 and 21, for he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The order of Aaron, Exodus 27 verse 17, All the pillars round about the court shall be filleted with silver, their hooks shall be of silver, and their sockets of brass. Hebrews 7 verse 12, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. The priesthood being changed, it needed to be changed from the imperfect Aaronic priesthood to the perfect order of Melchizedek. There is made of necessity a change of the law, the law that the priests upheld needed to change to a better system as well. That is the New Testament replacing the Old Testament. Hebrews is written to tell the law keeping Jew in time past, that there is something better that they should now follow. Hebrews 7 verses 13 to 17, For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there are saith another priest, who is made, not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Psalm 110 verse 4, The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe. Jesus is from the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe where Israel's kings are to come from and the king of kings. Genesis 49 verses 8 to 12. The similitude of Melchizedek. Jesus is like Melchizedek, in that Christ is eternal, and Melchizedek had no beginning of days, nor end of life, unlike the Aaronic priests that have gone on before him and all have died and we can read about their deaths. Christ and the New Testament are better than Aaron and the Old Testament. Under the New Testament, God's word will be written on Israel's heart in the kingdom and not on cold stones. All of Israel will become a nation of priests, not just the tribe of Levi, just like God originally told Israel back at Mount Sinai in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. There is an anti-Semitic teaching today that permeates a lot of churches, called the priesthood of the believer. It is a doctrine of devils stealing promises made to Israel by spiritualizing scripture to make it apply to the body of Christ. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 is not written to us in the body of Christ, neither is 1 Peter 2 verses 5 to 10, which is written by Peter to the Jews scattered abroad. It is the fulfillment of Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, to the Jews in the kingdom. Peter is one of them Exodus was written to, you are not. Hebrews 7 verses 18 to 19, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before, for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. A disannulling of the commandment going before, the old covenant is cancelled because it was weak, with sinful priests and sinners. A better hope, the new covenant is the better hope, and it can make things perfect because it is written on people's hearts in the kingdom so they will know to choose good instead of evil, for all of Israel shall be saved, and know the Lord. Jeremiah 31 verse 31, Hebrews 7 verses 20 to 22, And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. An oath, Psalm 110 verse 4. 
A surety, this is a banking term, which means to guarantee for another. Christ is the guarantor of the New Testament for Israel. Hebrews 7 verses 23 to 25, And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus is Israel's intercessor, as their high priest, and he is eternal. The old system would not work anymore, and their prayers and sacrifices at the temple would do Israel no good, because they did not recognize the change in God's program for Israel after the cross. This book is written to the Jew to warn them that God is doing something new and better, and for them to follow the old, and to reject the new that the old prophesied about, is to reject God. During the time of Jacob's trouble, there will be many Jews that will cling to the Old Testament ways and they will reject the witness of the two prophets, and the 144,000, and they will be deceived. This book warns them to move forward to what the old promised, and to put the past behind them. To move from the picture to the real thing. Hebrews 7 verses 26 to 27, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the peoples, for this he did once, when he offered up himself, this he did once, speaks of his death on the cross, for a thousand years of sacrifices all pointing to the one future sacrifice that would save them and they missed it. The writer is showing Israel just who Jesus was, and is, and how that has changed how they should worship God after the cross, and during the tribulation period. Hebrews 7 verse 28, For the law mocketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, mocketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. The word of the oath, this was the oath that has been quoted repeatedly in this chapter, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Verses 20 to 21 above. Chapter 8, The New Covenant. Hebrews 8 verse 1, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, we have such an high priest, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. We, the first we in this verse is the writer of this epistle and those who also speak the same things as the writer does, i.e., the writers of the Hebrew epistles, Hebrews through Revelation. Hebrews 2 verse 5. The second we is the Hebrews, to whom this letter is addressed to. An high priest, a high priest would make an atonement to God for the whole nation, as did Aaron. Exodus 30 verse 10 and Leviticus 21 verse 10. Israel's high priest is currently sitting at the right hand of God waiting until his enemies be made his footstool, and then he will sit as king of kings on his own throne in the kingdom. Psalm 1, 10 verse 1. The majesty in the heavens. The word majesty is synonymous with the word majestic. It means glory and radiance. The word is first used to describe God in the heavens by King David in 1 Chronicles 27 verses 10 to 12. It is often used to describe the greatness of certain kings. The word is capitalized only twice, here, and one other time also in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews 8 verse 2. A minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. A minister of the sanctuary. The word sanctuary means a place to find rest. Hebrews 7 verse 25. The true tabernacle. This tabernacle is in heaven, and it is better than the tabernacle that Moses pitched in the wilderness because the Lord made, pitched, it. Christ's tabernacle is better than men's. And the writer is saying to his Hebrew readers, don't settle for the shadow when you can have the real thing. Notice that it is not the temple mentioned here, but the tabernacle. That is because it is before the reign of Christ. He will be in his temple in the millennial kingdom, but for now, he is in his tabernacle in the heavens. Hebrews 8 verses 3 to 4, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Every priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Exodus 20 verse 24. Have somewhat also to offer. He offered a better offering than the blood of bulls and of goats. He offered his sinless blood that could wash away every sin. Hebrews 9 colon 7 dash 13 colon 20. 1 Peter 1 verses 2 and 19, 1 St. John 1 colon 7, 5 colon 6 dash 8, Revelation 1 colon 5, 5 colon 9, 7 14 and 12 11. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Jesus could not have been a priest under the Aaronic priesthood because he was not of the tribe of Levi. He could not have walked into the temple while he was on earth until a change was made in the first covenant. Since he was after the order of Melchizedek, 
He could offer in the tabernacle in heaven a once and for all sacrifice for all mankind. Hebrews 8 verse 5 Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. 4. C. Seth he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. Exodus 24 verses 8 to 9. The example and shadow of heavenly things. The tabernacle was very important when it was being used but it is not to be used anymore. The tabernacle was patterned after the one in heaven that Christ ministered in upon his resurrection for Israel. The book of Hebrews and the epistles that follow it belong to Israel and to her prophecy program. They are written for that little flock in the first century, Luke 12 verse 32, and the tribulation period believers. We in the body of Christ today are a parenthetical people. God has interrupted his prophecy program with the nation of Israel because of their unbelief and has instituted his mystery program that had been hidden God from before the foundation of the world. Once the rapture happens, that kingdom program will kick back in during the tribulation period. It will be just like it was doctrinally for those first century Jewish believers back in those days. Israel will pick up right where they left off. Hebrews 8 verse 6, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. But now, the now being spoken about here was the time when the book of Hebrews was written. Things will also be the same. Way in the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. A more excellent ministry, as Israel's high priest in the heavens, not as an earthly Aaronic priest. The mediator, Jesus Christ is the sole mediator, not a mediator, or a co-mediator of a more excellent ministry after his resurrection. This mediation was for those that were a part of the little flock in the early Acts period, and it is for the tribulation saints, as well as for those believers during the millennial kingdom, it is not for the dispensation of grace. Hebrews 9 verse 15 and 12 24. He is today the head of the church, but he was believing Israel's high priest in early Acts, and he will be again during the tribulation period. The old system will be in operation, and the books of Hebrews through Revelation are to be used as warnings to the little flock in that day, not to go back to the Old Covenant. They are to hearken to the words of these epistles, and words of the 144,000, and the two witnesses, to press on with a new, and better covenant. Better promises. These promises are found immediately following the first announcement of the new covenant in Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 32. Jeremiah 31 verses 33 to 34, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Hebrews 8 verses 7 to 8, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Jeremiah 31 verse 31. The law was weak through the flesh of man. The law was good according to Romans 8 verse 3, but it was weak because sinful men administered it. A new covenant, this term is used only four times in scripture. It is first found in Jeremiah 31 verse 31, and then here where that same verse is quoted by the author of Hebrews, again in this same chapter, and in Hebrews 12 verse 24. We were never under the old covenant, and we are not under the new one either. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15. Israel was in the early part of the first century, and they will be again in the tribulation period and during the kingdom. Hebrews 8 verse 9, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 31 verse 32. They entered into a contract of blessing and cursing with God, and if they continued in obedience to the old covenant, God would bless them, and if they broke it, then God will curse them. Leviticus chapter 26. Israel broke the covenant continually, and they have been cursed for it, but here God is offering to them a better covenant than the one they had been under. Hebrews 8 verses 10 to 13, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, 
and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Jeremiah 31 verses 33 to 34, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least. Of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The house of Israel, this is the literal descendants of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. All of Israel will be saved at the end of the tribulation period, and they will enter into the kingdom as a nation of priests. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. They will not teach other Jews the law, because all Jews will have it written on their hearts in the kingdom, and they will go into all the nations and teach the Gentiles. Do you have the law written on your heart? Do you still sin? Israel won't in the kingdom. It is different, because it is not our program, we are under grace. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15. Hebrews 8 verse 13, in that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. That which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Remember that the book of Hebrews was written to the Jews who had been scattered abroad into the Gentile nations after the time of the persecution that came as a result of stoning of Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1. They were living in a similar situation as those that will go through the tribulation period. And as such the covenant they received from Moses was waxing old and was ready to vanish away. That program covenant was put on hold, and Israel went into partial blindness. And now in this dispensation all Jews and Gentiles get saved the same way, by grace through faith. Romans 11 verse 25, Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Chapter 9 The Tabernacle in the Wilderness Hebrews 9 verse 1, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Ordinances of divine services. Notice it says here that the first covenant, which implies a second, had, past tense, ordinances of divine service. These were all the sacrifices and offerings that were associated with them. Leviticus. The word had also implies that it doesn't anymore have this worldly sanctuary. The use of the word worldly also implies that this other sanctuary will be otherworldly or a heavenly one. A worldly sanctuary, the tabernacle pitched by Israel. Verse 2. Hebrews 9 verse 2, For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. The first, the first room in the tabernacle is called the sanctuary. There is no mention of an outer court where sacrifices were made for the sins of the people. That is because Israel's sin problem was already dealt with at the cross. The table, this was the table where the showbread was placed. The showbread, twelve loaves of unleavened bread. The sanctuary, the holy place and room that contained the candlestick and the table of showbread. Jesus had offered himself as Israel's sacrifice, and because there is a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands that he introduces in verse 11 of this chapter. Because this book is written to Hebrews primarily for the tribulation period where they will spend three and a half years in the wilderness, it only makes sense then that the writer talks about the tabernacle. It was the tabernacle that Israel had for the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness to worship at. The temple is a picture of the millennial rest, while the tabernacle is a picture of Israel's wandering. Hebrews 9 verses 3 to 5 and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. The second veil, this implied that there was an entrance into the first sanctuary that had a veil to pass through. The tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, after the first tabernacle, sanctuary room, there was the second room called the holiest place. Hebrews 9 verse 12 and 24 to 25. The golden censer, this is taken from the first tabernacle and used in the holiest of all, the holy of holies. Leviticus 16 verse 12 And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Revelation 8 verse 3 And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. The Ark of the Covenant, 
All of the items inside the Ark of the Covenant were memorials of Israel's rebellion against God. The golden pot that had manna, Israel murmured against God and Moses, when they were hungry in the wilderness, and he gave them manna every day. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Matthew 6 verse 11, Give us this day our daily bread. The Lord would give them daily only one day's worth of bread for 40 years. This was to remind them of his provision. They will be fed once again during the time of Jacob's trouble when they are again in the wilderness. This time it will only be for three and a half years while the mark of the beast is required to buy or sell. Revelation 12 verse 6, Aaron's rod that budded, they murmured against Aaron, and God showed them his choice for priest with only the rod of Aaron budding. The tables of the covenant, the children of Israel rebelled against the word of God, so the tables of the covenant were placed there as a reminder of their weakness. This would get them to look for a better covenant based on a perfect high priest and priesthood. The cherubims of glory, cherubims is the plural form of cherub. The letters I and M in Hebrew, when placed at the end of a word, make the word plural. They shadow the mercy seat with the cherubim spreading their wings over the mercy seat. Cherubs are not angels. Angels do not have wings, as is commonly believed. Lucifer originally was called the anointed cherub that covereth in Ezekiel 28 verse 14. The mercy seat, the seat where mercy God would commune with Israel. Exodus 25 verse 22. Hebrews 9 verses 6 to 8. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, and for the errors of the people, the Holy Ghost this signifying, that the way into, the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. The service of God, the priests, plural, offered incense in the first tabernacle, as Zacharias did in Luke 1 verses 5 to 8. The way into the holiest of all, this is a reference to the holy place in heaven where the sin of the world would be dealt with once and for all when the perfect high priest offered himself as the sinless Lamb of God. As the first tabernacle was yet standing, the temple still remained up until the time just after Paul was martyred. The twelve were still daily in the temple preaching and teaching because they had not been told by God not to go there anymore. Hebrews 9 verses 9 to 10, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks, and divers washings, and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation, a figure for the time then present, it was a type of the real thing in heaven, that could not make him that did the service perfect, this is speaking about the priest doing the offering, and the person he was offering for, they only had their sins covered for another year, meats and drinks, meat offerings, divers washings. The translators chose to translate the Greek word baptismos as English word washings because the Greek word meant washings. It was not transliterated as the English word baptisms for a reason. A priest had to perform diverse kinds of washings before doing the service in the sanctuary. Remember when the leadership of Israel came to John the Baptist and asked him why he was baptizing if he was not that prophet nor the Christ? From that we have a testimony from the very people of Jesus' day that performed these diverse verse washings, that there were only two people allowed to baptize according to scripture, and that was the Messiah and his forerunner. This was also telling us that what they were doing, diverse washings, was not considered a baptism, or they would not have asked him that question. There was no priest performing any baptisms for anyone in Israel. They all knew that it would be the Messiah and his forerunner who would begin this ordinance for the nation of Israel. The one baptism of Ephesians is in reference to the fact that there were no longer two spirit baptisms as there was while the kingdom was still being offered to Israel. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit and the believers in the church which is Christ's body were, and are baptized by the Holy Spirit, into the body of Christ. When Israel was blinded in part, and that kingdom program was put on the shelf, so too was the baptism that went along with it, Israel's baptism with the Holy Ghost. Today there is only one spirit baptism, and that is being baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Carnal ordinances, these were imposed on Israel until the time of Reformation. The time of Reformation, the word Reformation is synonymous with the words regeneration and refreshing, which all three are used to describe the millennial kingdom when the curse will be lifted from off the earth, and all of Israel will be saved. Acts 3 verses 19 and 21, and Matthew 19 verse 28. Hebrews 9 verses 11 to 12, But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, 
by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And high priest, Jesus did not become Israel's high priest until the day of his resurrection. Good things to come, Joshua 24 verses 13 to 14, And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Hebrews 10 verse 1, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. This is a reference to the kingdom that is to come. By his own blood, Christ's blood did not contain the curse of sin that ours does, nor was it offered in a sanctuary made with sinful hands, because that only provided a temporary covering for Israel's sins. Israel had to keep coming back each year because it wasn't a perfect system, but Christ shedding his own blood and offering it to his Father in the tabernacle in heaven was a perfect offering. Having obtained eternal redemption for us, thus being spoken about, is the Hebrews under that system. Christ has also obtained eternal redemption for the Gentiles, but they are not the focus of the writer. Hebrews 9 verses 13 to 14, For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God, the eternal Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Because the old covenant was not written on their hearts as the new covenant would be, it was weak and could not purge their conscience. Hebrews 9 verse 15, And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. It was Israel that was called under the First Testament, and it is Israel that is given the New Testament. Israel, in the kingdom, will receive the promise of eternal inheritance that is spoken of here. The church is not Israel, and it is not under any covenant or testament. Jeremiah 31 verse 31, They which are called, those under the first covenant, the promise of eternal inheritance, eternal life in their kingdom. Hebrews 9 verses 16 to 17, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is, of force after men are dead, otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. The death of the testator, the New Testament could not be in force until after the death of the testator, Jesus Christ. That means that almost all of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John cannot be considered the New Testament because those parts were before his death on the cross. Since the New Testament will be written on Israel's hearts, they will know to choose good and not evil. The Jews will no longer need to ask their Jewish neighbor if they know the Lord, because all Jews shall know him. This is not so today. The New Testament is not in operation yet because we are operating in an unprophesied time period of grace, called the dispensation of grace. This dispensation has been hidden God from the foundation of the world, but now it has been made manifest through the Apostle Paul to us. Hebrews 9 verses 18 to 20 Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water, and scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book, and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Exodus 24 verse 8 And Moses took the blood, and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Hebrews 9 verses 21 to 22 Moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle, and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood. The law was not a perfect system, and by the deeds of the law no flesh could be justified in any age. It says here that almost all things are by the law purged with blood. The word almost means almost. There were some things that if a believer did under the law there was no blood sacrifice, they could bring to cover that sin. That means the law couldn't purge everything with the blood of bulls and goats, but almost. The blood of Christ on the other hand, can, because it is a perfect sacrifice, with perfect blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement. For your souls, 
for it is the blood that mocketh an atonement for the soul. Hebrews 9 verses 23 to 24, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. The heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, Jesus alluded to his priestly ministry in the companion book of Matthew in chapter 12 when he compared himself to the temple of which he said, A greater than the temple is here. Matthew 12 verse 6, But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. He compared himself to Solomon the king, because he would be a greater king than Solomon in the kingdom. He compared himself to Jonah the prophet and said that he was greater than Jonah as well, because he was prophet, priest, and a king. The figures of the true, the holy places made by Israel for making atonement for Israel's sins, meaning the tabernacle and later the temple. They were only figures, types, of the true tabernacle in heaven. Hebrews 9 verses 25 to 26, Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now once in the end of the world, Christ appeared once in the end of the world because he came to put away Israel's sin in the 69th week of Daniel's prophecy concerning Israel's prophetic time clock. That clock only had one more prophetic week of seven years remaining on it, the 70th, before a new beginning would occur, their kingdom. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, Jesus is offered up continually as a sacrifice for sin in many churches today. These teach that the work that Christ did on Calvary is not enough but only the church can offer salvation. What they are doing is making a priesthood for the dispensation of grace, which denies the sufficiency of Christ's finished work on the cross. Christ appeared for the purpose of getting rid of the picture, type, to bring to Israel and the world the real thing that type pictured, the all-sufficient sacrifice. Hebrews 9 verses 27 to 28, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So, Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hebrews 9 verse 27, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Romans 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The judgment, this is not the judgment seat of Christ. That takes place after the body of Christ is raptured from this earth. This is speaking generally concerning all who die, all will be judged. Not all will be judged at the same place or time. To bear the sins of many, many have wondered why it says that Christ came to bear the sins of many, and not all. The word many is a reference to the circumcision, not the uncircumcision. It is a reference to Israel, not to the world. Paul later revealed that Christ died for all the world as part of the mysteries revealed unto him. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 14 to 15 and 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. Them that look for him, it is Israel that is to look for Christ's coming at his second advent at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period. The second time, Christ came the first time 2,000 years ago, without sin, he will appear to the world without sin. When he appeared after his resurrection, he only appeared to a limited number of believers. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 7 to 10. Unto salvation, this is speaking about a time in the future for Israel, as spoken about in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 5 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and that for death not away, reserved in, heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The church, which is Christ's body, is not looking for him to appear, we are listening for the sound of a trumpet at the rapture. Ours is a secret departure, a mystery. Israel, however, awaits the visible, and physical return of Christ upon the earth, to begin his kingdom, and he will bring Israel's salvation with him. Act 319 Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Their sins will be blotted out when the Lord is present with them in the kingdom.